welcome to Tollefson Physics. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at drawing force diagrams on an example roller coaster. So roller coaster goes up, roller coaster goes around, uh, down, it can go around in a circle. And so we're going to take advantage of that. And this is all on curved surfaces. So we can actually start to figure things out using what we know about circular motion and applying it to the net force in these situations. So what I've got ahead is I've drawn a roller coaster, goes up the hill, goes down the hill, and then it goes in a loop-to-loop. -loop. And we're going to think about what is the forces acting on, let's say, a, uh, a person. So let's let's focus on a person that's inside, you know, so let's draw, right? we got a roller coaster here, and I've got the person in the, in the roller coaster. And so we're going to look at the force diagram based upon that. And so um, I'm going to draw it right below it. And so just like similarly, something that's just sitting there. So if the roller coaster is just sitting there, we're going to have force due to gravity and we're going to have a normal force. Um, and so those are the forces that are applied on the person. Uh, so now we're in motion and we're going in a circle. And so remember, a circle is... Um, applying a net force because you're changing the direction. So there is an acceleration. So what do I mean by that? Let me just kind of draw right on the diagram here, All right? This roller coaster is traveling this way. It has a velocity like that, but it is changing direction. And so it actually has an acceleration due to that changing direction. And so uh, this is what causes that velocity to change direction. Now, yeah, there's also a force due to gravity in here um, that as part of that but what really is happening we got this perpendicular setup that allows for the velocity to basically not change now it will as it goes downhill because the force due to gravity but at this instant up here we can approximate what's going on and so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a force diagram for that so i'm going to draw this force diagram right below it so i have a force due to earth's gravity now it's uh, it's on Earth. It, you know, I'm always going to have that uh, force at a distance. Now what's going to happen is the normal force has to be smaller to allow for that acceleration, therefore net force. So let me just go ahead. What is the net force in this case? The net force, which technically equals ma, right, is going to be the force in the direction of the turn minus the force in the opposite direction. Right? So the force due to gravity needs to be larger than the normal force. So think about that. When you go over a hill in a car or on a roller coaster, you go over a hill fast, you feel yourself lifting off the seat a little bit. Because remember, Newton's first law tells us that we want to keep going in a straight line. But you have this additional force, uh, difference in forces that cause you to change direction in this particular case. So going over a hill, you're going to feel kind of light. And we'll revisit that question because another question I could ask is based on the curvature of the hill, how fast do I have to go to leave the hill? So we'll come back to that in a different video. All right, so now my roller coaster is down here, right? So I'm in the roller coaster. There we go. And so the velocity is still tangential to the circle and then now it's turning upward so the acceleration is actually upward in this particular case so how does that change my force diagram I'm going to draw it down here where I have a little more space force due to gravity doesn't change so I'm going to try to draw that the same size as before what changes well the normal force has to change so the normal force is going to be larger and the reason that needs to be larger is for me to have an acceleration that's upward toward the center of the circle, I need to have more force up than down. And so once again, you know, F net equals MA. And based on my force diagram, my force diagram says the big force is force normal and the small force is the gravitational force. So, so I have a slightly different situation, but I use the same logic for each of those. So let me kind of circle that so it doesn't get mixed up with the uh, arrows. 
right? My normal force and my gravitational force appear to have changed, but it's based on my force diagram, right? It's based on the fact that at the bottom of a hill, you actually feel like you're being crushed into your seat. So you feel stronger than the pull of gravity, for, uh, than the acceleration of gravity. And part of what roller coaster designers are going to do is, you know, how many G's feels good and doesn't cause you to black out? And so you're going to look at things like that. Okay, and then we have one more situation. This one tends to be a little harder to think about. But the middle of the circle is, is toward the middle of the loop. And I am now actually upside down. I'm upside down. And there's always this concern that you could fall out. And if you don't travel fast enough around the loop, you will. That's another thing we could actually solve for. What is the minimum speed necessary for you not to fall out? All right. But we're not going to solve for that today. We could do that some other day. So what are the forces on here? Look at this carefully. So we have the force due to gravity, same length as the other arrows, right? That's that that that's the easy one. But how is the track or how is the car pushing on the person? Well, it's pushing downward, right? You're up against the top of the track, the track is pushing down against you so you don't fly into the track and that's what causes you to turn. And so I have a normal force that is pointing down as well. And the reason why that's confusing is you look at that and you're like, well, you're going to fall out of the cart, but that's not true. It depends upon how your motion is, right? And so the direction of your motion is that way. Even though your acceleration is down, that doesn't mean you're going to fall out. It just means it's going to cause this to turn. And so in this particular case, the net force equals MA is actually adding those two forces together. And so that is another example. So you have to think about when, you, when we talk normal, normal is a push that's perpendicular to you. And in that case, that perpendicular is down. All right. So being able to draw force diagrams for different situations that involve curvature allows us to use circular motion. And we have a net force because there is acceleration towards the middle of the circle that causes the change in direction. And so we're going to use that kind of information like I said, to be able to solve for some interesting things, like what is what is the speed I need to uh, go to jump off the hill? What is the speed I need to go so I don't fall off the loop to loop? All right, so we'll revisit that and have a wonderful day.